Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science. One of the things we do is to look at the evidence over the ideology on climate change issues. As the federal government moves to revise the pipeline approval process to include GHG emissions upstream, we are reminded of the post-Paris Climate Talks interview with Environment Minister, the Honourable Catherine McKenna, wherein she offered a nod to the people of the Marshall Islands, who claim to be at risk of drowning due to sea level rise. Essentially, they and other climate activists blame the Alberta oil sands. Here is her touching tribute. Really tough spot in the negotiations that a lot of developing countries like the Marshall Islands, I'm wearing the coconut fronds from the Marshall, Marshall Islands, I mean they're actually sinking as the waters rise, they're sinking and so 1.5 degrees is something that they need to see but also I think it, it creates a sense of urgency that we really need to act and we've all got a lot of work to do. But hold on, turns out that's false and misleading. The Marshall Islands is registered home to the third largest marine fleet on the planet. And according to this report, just 16 big ships put out the same pollution. That's pollution, not just GHGs, as all the cars on the planet. But restrictions on marine and air travel are conveniently excluded from the Paris Agreement. Further, since Montreal mayors have a bone to pick on pipeline safety and climate change, let's look at tanker traffic to and from places where Montreal gets its oil. These super tankers are traveling at least 7,000 kilometers at sea, powered by marine diesel which is filled with sulfur. You know, the stuff that can cause acid rain? The stuff that Alberta's industry and oil sands has methodically reduced over the past 30 years. In fact, the prairies in northern Ontario reduced SO2 emissions 68% in that time. So if the feds are looking at GHG emissions upstream, that's a pittance compared to the pollution and emissions from all the tankers going to port in Montreal and all the ships registered in the Marshall Islands. Instead of wearing their heart on their blazer for people far away, we hope the government will get to work on the economy and forget the eco-hypocrites of the world. Why are we going to be held accountable when none of these guys are? Is this really about climate change? Or is it a trade war fronted by climate catastrophe eco-groups, as discussed in our latest report by William Kay, Post Paris? Our opponents are using climate guilt to get us to shut in our own product and go bankrupt so they can extract favors like forcing us to buy renewable energy devices like wind turbines, one of Europe's biggest export industries, or foisting carbon trading on Canada. Look how this popped up from nowhere. Trading for Tidewater, an op-ed by Chris McDermott, former negotiator on Kyoto, who's now in the carbon markets. Essentially, he's saying, now all your export markets are blocked, you only have one choice, cap and trade. Well, look, Ma, this map from Interpol's Guide to Carbon Trading Crime shows that Alberta's carbon market, marked in white, goes into R&D right now. Ontario, Quebec, California, seems like they want us to abandon R&D and trade carbon with them. And funny how so many of those ENGOs blocking progress are funded by an offshore foundation whose stated mandate is to push carbon trading systems. On January 21st, 2016, Canadian celebrity, entrepreneur, author called it like it is, saying, My conclusion, special interest groups in concert with the illogical hijacking of our fair and equitable national interests by environmental extremists, funded by American charities like Tides, are going to destroy our nation if all the all-too-silent majority doesn't stand up soon and call BS and get back to what made Canada great, pulling on the same damn rope. That's from Brett Wilson. Marshall Islands drowning? If so, it's due to them running the third largest marine fleet. Montreal claiming climate and safety issues on pipelines? Meanwhile, importing millions of barrels from of unrefined crude oil by ocean tanker over distances of 7,000 kilometers or more? <laughs> That's climate justice? Well, we're in favor of climate justice ourselves. Climate just is. No amount of taxing, carbon trading, or economic extortion will change that. That's the evidence over the ideology. For Friends of Science, 
I'm Michelle Sterling.